Hi, I'm Predator Fun, and in this video we will compare the Quality Summon S1 versus the Einstein Rocket by scanning a micrometer five times with each scanner and then determining the distance between spindle and anvil of the micrometer. Um, the distance is a yeah, relatively known <laughs> entity, so we will um, can deduct some crude accuracy readings, but keep in mind the methodics isn't uh, exactly um, methodology laboratory. The scan setup looks like this. The micrometer was placed on the turntable. I placed also marker geometries um, on the turntable to allow more shallow scan angles. So when I'm approaching or I want to scan the faces of spindle and anvil, I need to um, have a low angle. And without these marker geometries, uh, it is right at the um, at the capture edge, or at the limit, uh, how shallow it can be with only the flat markers on the turntable. While scanning, the turntable was not rotated to prevent wobble, um, since it is a rather cheap turntable with no real high precision thrust bearing. I also had to use um, scan spray. The micrometer itself was calibrated to um, 125.00 millimeters plus minus 0 0.01 millimeters. That's the tolerance of this micrometer. Um, but due to the spindler and anvil faces being polished quite to a mirror shine, I had to use um, scan spray. I used a very thin coat of airsoft blue. Um, per the spec sheet of the manufacturer, the coat is somewhere between eight and 550 micrometers. I used um, eight micrometers for my calculation. It's like it subtracts from the given measurement or given distance here. So we come out to um, 124.984 millimeters distance. The scale settings were uh, similar for both scanners. Uh, I had set um, 0.2 millimeters at the tar target resolution and scanned until the quality indicator reached uh, the, the full quality, especially in the areas of the anvil and spindle, with also a bit to the side chain. Um, there was the main difference for the Sermon S1. Um, it took roughly three to 4,000 frames until it was reached, but for the Einstein rocket, it took more like six to 7,000 frames. In the next slide, you will also see the different results on a sample scan, um, where we can maybe deduct some <laughs> findings from this. Uh, fusion and meshing was performed in the default settings, and I took uh, five repetitions with each scanner. If we now look at two scans, one of the with the Sermon S1 and the other one with the rocket, we can see that even though both were set to 0 to in two millimeters, the scan of the rocket looks a bit better in surface finish and also in edge clarity. Like if we look here at the spindle and also in this area, the rocket looks sharper. Keep in mind, it, I also took roughly double the amount of frames to reach the uh, desired quality indicator, um, like 3,000 frames for the Sermon S1 and 6 to 7,000 for the rocket. Um, this may be the reason it's most likely on the softer side or the default settings. Uh, both scanners can reach a si um, pretty similar result if you keep on scanning with the 7S1 until you reach the same frame count. But my explicit goal was to um, to use a realistic scanning scenario. This was also um, further improved or further enhanced by using normal marker tracking. I didn't bother to create a global marker file. Since my normal scans, I most most often don't do it. Um, simply because it is quicker. Um, often I dynamically edge scan targets if I noticed I'm missing some. So it's more like the real use case scenario for me. How did I measure? Um, I import the SDL files into Quick Surface, also the SDL files of the Sermon S1 and the Rocky scans. Then I extracted planes on the faces of the spindle and the anvil by using the extract primitives tool in quick surface that's basically you paint on the, the area or you you click on the area you want to, to choose then it automatically selects um, the points in in a given tolerance and you can put a plane through it 
both planes are constrained to be parallel, so I can measure the distance between the planes um, and not the angle between them, because that's the um, um, reality of the of the micrometer that they are ideally uh, parallel. Now let's look at the scan data uh, taken. Um, I won't go through all the um, single values, but you can see the most important thing. This is the target we want to reach, or the reality we want to um, reproduce to a certain degree. Um, 124.984 millimeters plus minus 0.01 millimeters. So you can see um, it's more like 125 to 1249. Um, the average value of the of, of the five scans for the Cermax one is 125.0056. So given the tolerance, it's more like 125.0.1. For the um, rocket, it's um, exactly 125. Um, if we cut the the um, last two digits, but if you want to uh, keep on the, the uh, calculated uh, values, it's 134.9648. More interesting, it's the um, beta given to the um, real world reading. They are pretty similar. So for the rocket, it's 0 0.019192. And for the Serban S1, it's 0 0.02162. So basically both are um, 0 0.02 millimeters delta. Uh, plus minus. So if we look at this in a chart, we can see um, the blue line is target, and the servant S1 is continuously reading a bit high. Uh, and for the Einstein rocket, we can see it is pretty close to the ID value, but the first pass was, yeah, if we want to call it outlier, it's uh, roughly uh, a bit under 0 0.1 millimeters too few so um you can take it um yeah this was the small comparison i hope it maybe give gave some advice to you uh in real world views they are quite similar keep in mind for the sermon is one there is official accuracy and volumetric accuracy specs whereas for the answer rocket there are none uh, no real specs released um so take this with a grain of salt